Good morning and thank you for watching. My name is Amanda and today I'm going to be making almond waffles and some bacon using my Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker and I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to actually pan sear up some bacon in it. It is phenomenal and these almond waffles are just they're really tasty, they're gluten-free, they're great for sandwiches, a BLT, um, using it as a bun for a burger, it's really tasty. So anyways, please stay and watch and I'll show you everything that I'm cooking. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and pan sear up the bacon um, because that takes longer. So let's go ahead and get that done. Just cutting the pack open. And I am using the Kirkland bacon. I really like this one. You actually get four packs of bacon for $15.99. That's, that's such a great deal. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker, because that's how we're gonna be cooking it today. Turn this on, you just hit power. And we're gonna go to sear saute. So just turn the dial. And I'm just gonna leave it on high, and I'm gonna hit start. Now I don't wait for it to completely heat up saying add food. I just go ahead and add my bacon right on in. And I really like using the Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker cooking bacon because it reduces less splashes everywhere on your counter. Whereas, you know, using a pan and pan searing it directly on the stove, you get bacon splashes everywhere. You do get some with this, but not as much as you would with a regular pan. Okay, so for the almond waffles, we're gonna start on those while the bacon is cooking. I am using Kirkland almond flour, and um, I like this one a lot. It's gluten-free, and don't forget, when using it, put it in the fridge um, when storing it, not back in the pantry or the cabinet. All right, so we're gonna need one cup of almond flour. do our dry ingredients first. Right now we're going to need one teaspoon baking soda. Oh, I can hear the bacon sizzling right now. It smells good. I might have to do two packs because I don't know how long it'll last till for dinner tonight because I know my middle son, he's definitely going to want to eat some before dinner. I thought, let's go ahead and get this going for dinner tonight um, because I can just put the bacon in the fridge. I can have my almond waffles ready for tonight and I can have a BLT with everyone else being me that I'm gluten free. So it's going to be really tasty. See, you can see the bacon is starting to sizzle up. Smells good. In a bit, I will flip them over. All right, we're going to need a pinch of salt. So I'm going to take all my dry ingredients that I've added, salt, baking soda, and the almond flour, and I'm just going to mix it together. Okay, so we need four eggs. And you know me, I always save my eggs shells for my garden. smell the bacon? I am making bacon for BLTs tonight. I smell the bacon. You smell the bacon? And the eggs. And the eggs? <laughs> All right, so that's four eggs. Oops. And saving my eggshells. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Now we're gonna need a fourth cup of olive oil. in the description box down below. Now for this recipe, I am changing a few things for this type of almond waffle. When I have it with a BLT or a sandwich or um, as a burger, I like doing it with the um, olive oil instead of the honey and the vanilla extract in this recipe because then it's, it's more like an actual piece of bread instead of being really sweet where you know you don't really want something super sweet for a burger or a sandwich or a BLT um, so I omit the honey and the vanilla extract and I use olive oil for this 
It was looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Also, as you can see, I am using a silicone tongs for this type of Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker because I don't want to scratch up the inside lining. So now that I have my eggs in here, I'm going to go ahead and mix this all together. And you just want to make sure that you get all the lumps out. And that bacon is smelling really good. All right, that looks good. This little um, waffle um, dash, it is really nice. And I actually have two of them. But I put GF on mine for gluten-free and the other one is just regular for wheat ones for everyone. So I'm just gonna plug it in and and you can see the blue lights on. And I'm going to go ahead and spray. That way it does not stick. And I'm going to go ahead and check on the bacon. Bacon looks perfect. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And then get my next ones in there. bacon on um, some paper towels on a plate so that way the extra grease can uh, soak into the paper towel and this is still heating up so I'm going to use a big plate so once the almond waffles are done I can set them individually like to cool down um, that way then they are not soggy for later tonight and when I go to make a BLT I will go ahead and toast them up instead of putting them in the microwave so that way it has a nice texture to it dash is ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of the mixture in there and make my first almond waffle. Alright, that's about how much I'm putting on. I'm just going to close it, let it cook, and then when it's done, the light will turn blue, so I will then open it up and take it out. Go ahead and flip my bacon. My light had turned on. Um, I opened it up. I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer. Sometimes you need to just look at the way the waffle looks instead of going by the blue light telling you it's done. Alright, that looks perfect. Let me grab something to get it. I'm actually going to use the same tongs. So it's less mess for me to clean up. Perfect. Alright, starting on my second one. Now these do freeze up really well. I like to take mine on a cookie sheet, line it with parchment paper, and then um, lay them out individually on top, and then put it in my freezer and let it to where it hardens up. And then once it's hardened, um, so about like a good hour in the freezer, and then I take it and put it in a Ziploc bag. That way each waffle does not stick to each other because it's harder than to take them apart when they're all sticking together. So that's like the easiest way that I know how to freeze them, um, to use them later on for sandwiches. And then, instead of microwaving it, I put mine in a toaster oven or in a toaster and it is really good. Uh, you can put butter on top with jam and have it as like a breakfast kind of little um, piece of toast. Uh, I mean, you can do so many different things with it. It is really good. When it's done, I'm going to go ahead and add some more bacon into it. Actually, might definitely do another package of bacon. I don't think it's going to last all day with my middle child smelling this. It smells really good. Okay, everything's cooking up nicely. Yum. I normally like to cut the bacon in half and make it to where it's all perfectly sized for putting it on a piece of bread for a sandwich. But I just wanted to rush and get this done because my youngest was still taking a nap. So I wanted to use my time wisely and get as much stuff done as I could. I actually pulled out some 
more eggs and the other ingredients that I was making these waffles with because I decided I'm actually going to make more because I already have the bowl out. I already have the waffle machine going. My mom's coming in town, so she likes these too. So this is perfect. I will have extra in the freezer for us to have for breakfast. So definitely, I'm doubling up on the batch today. Some bacon finally cooled down for my son to finally try it, and he was very happy about it. I really love when we do BLTs for dinner some nights. It's nice because I can make it in the morning, have it ready for the evening, and we just heat it up for the night. Some nights can be really busy. Either my husband works late, or we have gymnastics, or we have soccer, and this is just perfect. Yeah, Everyone's happy. <laughs> Take away. Take away. I know that there are multiple ways you can um, cook bacon, but I do like the texture that this bacon gets from pan searing it in the Ninja Foodie Possible Cooker Pro. It is very crisp. Um, you can make it to, you know, whatever type of style bacon you like for crunchy or a little bit soft, but it is really good. So now I'm just going to add more to this bowl. Cup of flour, sorry, cup of almond flour. One teaspoon of baking soda. And then I need um, a fourth cup of olive oil. And you need a pinch of salt. And then four eggs. Now I know earlier I had mixed all my dry ingredients and then my wet ingredients, but being that I am reusing the same bowl, this is what we're going to do, and it'll still all be good. Oop, as I make a mess dropping that egg over on the side, I'm trying to rush so I can get that bacon flip, and also while my son is still sleeping, go ahead and flip that bacon. Ooh. All right, that one definitely splatters. All right, so I got... All right, now we're going to go ahead and whip it in. Mix it together. Just making sure that I had all the ingredients. I got the olive oil, the almond flour, the salt, the eggs. Just mix it till it's combined and that it's nothing lumpy. I like the price of this um, almond flour from Costco and the, the size of the bag I get. It's a $9.99 at Costco. And I mean, and it's a decent sized bag. There is, it's actually a three pound bag of almond flour. I have a recipe that I love making for the kids and it's almond, um, blueberry almond muffins. And it is really good. They don't last long in the house. That I definitely make more than one batch. So that way I can freeze some for another morning for the kids. All right, we'll keep going with some more. All right, I'm going to show you everything, uh, how it looks, because it is really, it looks good. All right, 
All right, so here's the bacon. The bacon, I'm gonna be here forever cooking bacon. So I wanted to show you what it looks like, but the bacon turned out really nice and crunchy. Um, I love using the Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker for it. I love that it's it's just really simple and easy to use it. And also the nice thing is, it cleans up very well. Uh, obviously take your bacon grease and drain it. Uh, like put, I always put mine in a jar and then twist the top. That way it doesn't go down the sink. But it just cleans up so easily afterwards. I really, really like using the Ninja Foodie Possible Pro Cooker for making bacon. Um, all right, let me get another waffle going here. I can show you the waffles. All right, so here are the almond waffles. They, I like to kind of let mine spread out so they can draw up, uh, dry, so they can cool down. But they are really nice. And then when I go to put them with a sandwich, again, just toast it in the toaster oven or just a toaster. They're really great. And then I can show you how I'm going to freeze these as well, okay? Doubling the almond waffle recipe, I ended up getting 17 waffles. Everything took a total of 41 minutes to uh, pan sear up the bacon and make the waffles. I put all the bacon in a Tupperware to put in the refrigerator. And these I'm saving and putting in the refrigerator for uh, dinner tonight and for tomorrow in the morning. I made my label for gluten-free almond waffles with the date on it. And I pulled the waffles out of the freezer. I left them in um, a little longer than an hour because I lost track of actually what was going on after I got done with the bacon and making the waffles. So it's perfectly fine if they stay in a little longer than an hour. But they are perfect. They're hard. That's, that's how I want it to be before placing them all in the same Ziploc bag. So that way they don't stick to each other. So when I do want one from the freezer, they are easily to be able to be pulled apart. I like a traditional BLT with lettuce, tomatoes, bacon, mayonnaise. Now my kids like it with cheese, so that's perfectly fine. I toasted the almond waffles in the Gourmia toaster oven. I heated the bacon up in the microwave. Dinner turned out really good. Everyone loved it. And I hope you enjoyed what I made today. Thank you for watching.